Okay, everybody, we are back with another video, and wow. <clears throat> so, in my last video, at the end of it, I, if you watched it all the way through, I, I, t I told everyone what I would do if I were charged with dealing with the chop. Or Chaz, whatever it's being called now. And I said, the first thing I would do is build a wall and then shut off utilities. And starve them out. Well, guess what Seattle does? <laughs> this is coming in from KD Hume. I guess she's inside the chop. Seattle has cut off water and electricity to the chop area in the middle of a heat wave. Seattle is waging war on its own citizens instead of listening to them. Um, one, correction, you are technically not citizens because you created an autonomous zone. On the front of uh, uh, your barricades, there's all these signs that says, Caution, you are now leaving the U.S. So, uh, I'll give you the same advice that was given to a couple of Missourians back when we were, uh, you know, technically an independent area during the Civil War. And that was, uh, this this area is not the United States, so the Constitution doesn't extend to you. Okay? Uh, but yes, this is, this is what happens, you morons, when you pick a position and don't properly supply it. Okay? Uh, the first thing you should have been thinking about was being besieged. No one thought about this stuff. I think... Um, Razor Fist was talking about how they had taken a group of weather underground, took control of Alcatraz and held it for a month. You morons have held it for like, what, two weeks? You've held an area and you got your entire water supply cut off and you got your electricity cut off. This, and I'll state this right now, these two utilities being cut off are going to exacerbate the problems you've already got with heat because one you're not going to be able to cool off very effectively except in the shade. And because you're not going to be able to cool off, you're going to sweat most of your hydration out of your body. Okay? Uh, if, it's, if, your, if your heat wave is anything like it is in Missouri, you're going to sweat so much moisture that you're going to stop taking a piss. It literally gets that hot here in Missouri. That's mostly because the area I live in is swamp country. So the humidity will just kill you. All right. Um, and this was something that you idiots did not think about. Okay. You, you are in the middle of a siege. That's what's going on. And logic of a siege, the most effective means of breaking a siege is to starve the enemy out. You've got supply. As long as you can bring supplies in, to the area, to your forces surrounding the castle, you can besiege it indefinitely. What's inside, they have no farms. Your, your, your farms are shit, okay? And they've already cut off your water, so your, your uh, plants are not going to last very much longer, okay? Um, honestly, I will, I will make this prediction right now. This They've cut the power, water and power off on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure by about Monday we're going to see a break in this if they don't turn the water and power back on and they don't allow people to have any more hydration. Because uh, you've got to remember survival runs on basically threes. You can survive three minutes without oxygen. And, and this is basically the average person being put in a, in a hostile situation. You can survive three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, and three weeks without food. Y'all are already out of food and, and running low. You're going to run it. You probably don't have enough water. And your only hope now is to try and figure out how to smuggle water back in or figure out how to get water on your own. And most of you idiots don't know anything about water purification. So I'm pretty sure some of y'all are going to suffer from some kind of disease before this is over with, which is just going to be hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> the diseases you can get from non-purified water or from unpurified water are ridiculous y'all look let me let me explain how this is going to go down okay if y'all if y'all if y'all screw this up okay you already have with, with the water going out you've already knocked out your ability to put hydration back into your system but that also takes away your ability to operate toilets 
you no longer have any sewer disposal system operating within your city. This is just a basic utility. If you guys drink unpurified water and get some kind of parasite or bacteria, the shit is really going to flow then. Because what will happen is the exact opposite. You'll start vomiting and having diarrhea, and that will then begin to dehydrate you faster. Also, another thing, Starbucks coffee dehydrates the crap out of you. So your your coffee supply is going to be absolutely worthless. Caffeine's horrible for you in a survival situation. So is alcohol. Uh, all of those dehydrate the crap out of the human body. You'll be lucky if you get anything. Now, if the police are smart, if the police are smart, they will hold off and barricade y'all in there and keep the barricades up and prevent people from leaving until you surrender. Now, probably what they're going to do is they're going to allow you to leave, but they're going to prevent people from going back in until they have enough people outside of the chop that they can move in there with force and not have to worry about getting shot at too much. If they are shot at, it'll be one or two people engaging them. It won't be an entire security force, basically. But, um, yeah, the very first thing, if you're going to do this, if I, if I were to run the chop, this is what y'all should have done. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be generous and tell you what you should have done. I know you're not going to listen to me. Number one, you should have created a chain of command. There should have been one guy that was in charge of military operations, and he should have been the guy in charge of everybody with the guns. Number two, you should have shored up water supplies. You should have had barrels of water on standby to bring into the chop and then secure and then put them in the most secure building. You then should have had food and then medical supplies on top of that. That's how your supplies should go. And then maybe even bring in some portable generators to create air-conditioned environments. Uh, possibly even solar battery banks that you could fill up during the day and then just kind of like cool off certain areas for people to live in. This is me paraphrasing idea, just bouncing ideas off. Secondly, you should have built up defensive positions to hold up. As of this point, Chicago or Seattle PD is probably going to take the, sh- the chop without firing a single bullet because this it's a waiting game now. You're either going to die inside the chop. There's not going to be this massive... Whoop, messed up my microphone there for a minute. So there, there's not going to be this massive battle that's going to take place in the chop. What's going to happen is you're going to have the police will wear you down with no water, no electricity. The heat's going to beat you down. Um, are people going to die in the chop? Oh yeah, they're going to die. Okay. People are going to die of heat stroke. People going down by heat stroke. They're going to be bringing them to, so y'all might as well just get an ambulance ready or, or just a transport ready to start busting people out. My suggestion at this point for anybody that's in the chop, anyone who is a citizen, get the fuck out now. If you don't want to be a part of this, because just grab what's important to you, what you cannot replace and get out because you are going to be put in a desperate situation with people that are going to be looking for water wherever they can get it. Uh, I say it's going to take about four to five days, not because I think they can last that long, but because there are water sources you can get to that they'll have to dry up first. So I'm saying about Monday to maybe next Wednesday, give about another week pretty much. And they'll eventually be down because you can do things like drink water out of the toilet out of the uh, the bowl, not not the bowl. You can actually drink water out of the tank of the toilet if you really get necessary. Um, there are places you can get some water, and if you know how to filter water and you know how to ration water, uh, you can do that. But uh, what are we kidding? These are a bunch of spoiled little rich kids who don't understand the concept of rationing and limiting and moderation. When they get hold of a bottle of water and it gets hot, they're going to chug the whole thing down. They're not going to sip it and, and try to make it last. They're not going to stay in shady spots. They're going to be stupid and walk around in the heat. And that's that's a good thing because that's going to eventually wear this thing down. Um, like I said, the reasoning because the chop is going down is because it's not become politically viable for the Democrats. Uh, they hoped... They were hoping for Trump to come in there and lay the, the slap down on it, and Trump basically said, uh, "This is your responsibility, not mine." <laughs> it's like it's like you're it's like you let your kid run out there and start murdering, pe- doing mass shootings, and you you want Trump to come in there and go out and shoot your kid so you can claim victim status. And Trump says, "No, this is your kid. He's your responsibility. <laughs> go go after your little bastard and stop him." 
Um, you're not going to have Trump's not going to send in the National Guard. He's not going to he's not going to charge in there. If nothing else, the the little bit of video that we've gotten out of the chop and out of Chaz, that's going to be used in his campaign for law and order. And that's what Trump is going to promise everyone. You everybody has seen the chaos. They're seeing the chaos come down. And Trump is just going to go, yeah, you know, uh, this is the, you see the chaos the Democrats are bringing. And then he's going to be like, did you see the monuments that were torn down in Washington, D.C.? I didn't let any of the monuments get torn down. And I'll extend that nationwide. Um, If Trump really wants to get people on his side and certain communities, because, you know, the communists, there's really not that many of these commies. All right. There's not that many of them. What Trump should do is promise that if he's reelected, He will produce a budget or a a firm to replace every statue that is torn down. That is not removed by a vote of the people. In other words, any statue that Antifa or BLM go into in a town and they tore down, even though the town said they're not going to. And that's what you got to remember. A lot of these statues are not torn down by the behest of the people. They're torn down because someone came in from outside and demanded it be torn down. And when the vote was put in and said no, actually there was a lot of Confederate statues that were done like this in the South. And that's what a lot of Confederate, that's what a lot of people in the South were saying. They said, look, there's a lot of us, we're not voting for this. We're not voting to remove our history. We like our statues. We want to keep them. And they ended up going in there and still ripping them out anyway or intimidating them. Most of the statues that are, when they're torn down, they're shipped off. I believe there's this guy that does like a slave museum or a racism museum, and he completely contorts, he distorts the entire meaning of the statues altogether, and then there's a part where he puts all the white people in chains and makes them, basically tortures them while they're in there uh, about slavery, which is unnecessary in in my opinion, because I doubt you're going to find some kid that's going to say slavery is a good thing, unless you get two consenting adults and one of them signs their rights over in a contract, which is the only... Most people, when they get treated like slaves, it's usually a kink, and they they pay for that nonsense. But as I said, it's the chop has no longer become politically viable for the Democrats. It's it was a long, it was apparently, it, basically, it was a big bet, and they lost again on it. All Trump had to do was just wait it out, and it's one of the things. And that's the thing about the Democrats; they don't make long-term game strategies. It appears. It appears that the only thing they're able to make is short-term gains, or short-term decisions that, in the long term, do not pan out very well. So they'll they'll make this short-term decision of, oh, we'll get Trump to come in here and look like a, a fascist by clamping down on this, and the the thing Trump the, the way Trump beats it is he just doesn't do anything. And I know there's lots of liberals out there that are saying, oh my God, you know, we got to do something, or not not just liberals, there's a lot of Republicans and never Trumpers out there that are going, oh, you know, Trump's got to go in there and do something, we got to do something, we got to take this down. Well, yeah, you could do that, or you could be like, what was it, the second king of doom, when he's in the sandworm and he says, I'll give mankind so much peace that they'll become agitated because man is not a peaceful creature. To an extent, I may be misinterpreting that because it's been so long since I've read it. <laughs> but he ba- basically, he says, mankind keeps telling me they want peace. I'll give them so much peace, it'll make them uncomfortable. And, and all you got to do is just sit back and give the people communism. And the, the stupid part about Chaz was they gave America an opportunity to taste taste test and test drive communism. And guess what? It, there's a, what is what is that? There's actually a propaganda cartoon where they do that where the guy is selling a communism as snake oil and he t- and one dude says you think that's good he said just try a bit of it before you buy it and they all try it and like the farmers are being uh are having these giant collars put around their necks the politicians are they've got radios their heads are replaced with um what is it record players saying everything is fine everything is fine the the factory worker is now another. He's also a slave being worked to the bone, uh, and and worked. He he was a big strapping guy, but now he he's worked into a thin man. After where they don't want any of the snake oil after because they tried it and it, it's horrible. It tastes bad. 
So, yeah, that that's basically what Trump has done. He's given, he's basically given uh, the socialists an inch, and they are unable to take a mile out of it. They've proven their inability to do anything. Uh, they're they're pretty much run by lazy people, people who are. And it, I say lazy because it doesn't take a whole lot of brain cells to go out there and destroy something. It takes a lot more effort to build something than it does to destroy it. And that's what these people are. They're lazy, useful idiots that can't run anything. And they're anarchists. Which is like trying to herd cats to an extent. Because until the only time I have seen the Chaz unite efficiently on anything, and I, I use the term efficiently very loosely here, um, was when people were getting shot at. And that's the only time that they began to, you know, rally up and go and do something. They began to fight together because, oh, it, it became a, a problem of everybody. When you take away these people's enemy, when you take away the person they have to fight and leave them to their own devices, they pretty much just fall apart. Their entire identity is based on fighting something. And if you take it away, they start falling apart. They don't know how to, to handle uh, government. They don't know how to handle power. They don't know how to manage anything, nor do they understand what it takes to put society in order. I mean, you take a look at this, and logic dictates you probably should have picked an area with its own water supply. Like uh, an area of the city that had like a lake near it, or a pond, maybe, you know? But, uh, yeah, hey, and these people have... Uh, ba- basically, what's happened here is now is they, they've put themselves onto a, a cliff. And all the police have to do is they just have to hold position and wait till they start surrendering one at a time. It, it's going to happen. Uh, we've seen this in uh, there. It's this is stuff like this is happening where these protesters come into like small towns, rural communities, and try to tear things up. And then the rural community comes back. Has it started now? You know, coming in with force. They start showing up with guns. There was one town. I don't know where it was. I, I remember hearing it on Tim Pole's channel. And he said there was like a town showed up to, it was like a protest showed up of like 107 people and over 900 people showed up armed to the teeth and basically ran them out of town. It was the actual citizens ran them off. And that's what I think is going to have to happen. I think Trump is going to have to get out there and say, look, uh, if the towns want to defend themselves, we have this thing in the constitution which is a second amendment which is to produce a regulated militia you just need to build a regulated militia to stand up to these idiots and just be on the watch and be ready and i think that's what's going to eventually have to happen uh it's the only way i see of avoiding a civil war right now is getting the militias to defend the town is forming militias in every town and having those militias defend every town to the point where blm and antifa have so much trouble rioting that it makes the environment inhospitable and then eventually they just their their membership dies off because right now they're going out and doing this and they're getting support because they seem like they can do it with impunity. Uh, the problem is the cities are not going to be able to do very much because they're dem- most of them are democratically run. St. Louis and Missouri, like if my town were to do that, we could get four or five hundred armed men very quickly. And then we not only we have home field advantage plus firepower. All right. And we could have an excuse. If no one wants to prosecute us, then we can pretty much do what we want. And the other guys can't do nothing. If you take St. Louis, where the National Guard went in and took down the looters and rounded them all up within an hour. And then an hour later, the pros- the liberal prosecuting attorney or district attorney in the area, whoever she is, turned around and turned them all loose. And I believe they made over 400 arrests, the National Guard did, which our National Guard's amazing. They're they're take-no-shit, boots-to-ass, of G.I. Joe kind of individuals. Um, <clears throat> you are, you're going to have a much harder time because you have a liberal mayor, you have a, a liberal DA, and they're not, they're not going to look too kindly on citizens, you know, defending their territory or defending their homes. So it's something that would have to be a presidential order. Uh, I would simply declare war on Antifa. And just say that the communities in the United States need to defend themselves and authorize them to form militias as long as they're uh, pro-American militia. Let them go to town. Because it's one thing to go into a town 
like you're going to take it over. It's another thing to go into a town and the very citizens that you're going to go terrorize suddenly come out and start bullying you. <laughs> Just start pushing you around. And at that point, there at that point, the cowards that are in this group that want to do the mob mentality, uh, that believe in the safety of the mob, they believe strength in numbers, they're going to be getting hit with superior numbers in almost every town they go to. And then after a while, they're like, let's go home, smoke pot, watch uh, pot stoner movies because this is getting this is getting too hard and that's what you have to do you have to remember these are lazy people and if you make life difficult on them they'll go on to the next thing as long as it's easier you just have to you have to give them what's called a swine what i like to call the swine education it's something my dad would do to pigs he had this one pig in particular that would get out of the pen all the time and uh my dad every time we would go out there he would have me feed and for five days straight he grabbed a root wad a a uh He grabbed like a, uh, what is it? It's like a fig tree limb or something. It's a small sapling, and he pulled it out with a big root on on the end of it. And he chased this pig down, and once the pig get tired enough to where he'd get close to it, he'd wear it out. And he kept doing this for about five days straight. And one day, we start coming down the road, and we looked. There's this pig outside the fence. And this thing was, and pigs are intelligent. This thing had figured out electricity to the point. It figured out enough of electricity that it could, it figured out it could, push dirt up against the hot wire that we had it on because we had them in an electrified fence. And it figured out electricity to the point that it knew that if it put enough dirt up to the electrical wire, it would short circuit it or basically draw enough of the power off of it that it wouldn't hurt as bad as it went through it. And it just waddle its way through the, the wire. And so my dad steps out of the vehicle on day five, on day six, pulls the root wad out of the back of his truck. The pig looks at my dad looks at the wire, looks at my dad, and then just squalls all the way to the wire and just punches right and just gets caught up for a second, gets shocked a few times. His bacon gets a little singed, but he eventually gets through it. And afterward, that's what he did every time. He would get out of the pen, but the moment he saw my dad's red Dodge Ram coming down the road, that sucker was a hauling it back to that pen because it understood that there was going to be a whooping If he got caught outside that pen, it was just better to be back inside. And that's what you're going to have to do to these people. You're going to have to make the environment outside of the law so inhospitable and so violent to them that they are, and so toxic, basically, that they will eventually be of the point of, you know, maybe peaceful protest is the best way to go because we've squeezed the people too much and now they're fighting back. But... I don't know if that real, I don't know if the real Donald Trump, I don't know if President Trump will take that advice. It's not something I'm going to give to him, but, uh, that's what I would do. I, right now I would arm the militias. I would say, look, start forming militias in towns, work with your local law enforcement and defend your monuments. All right. My town, the closest monument we've got, we do have like a lady Liberty statue in our town. It's in like. If they come for that thing, all oh, hell's going to break loose because they've already come. Socialists done came after it once in the 80s. We had to replace the uh, the crown spikes because some jackass went up there back in the 80s and knocked off and just beat off all of her crowns, all the crown spikes off of the uh, Lady Liberty statue, and we had to have new ones put in. But uh, yeah, we're not letting that shit happen a second time. Anyway, that's that's what I would do if I was in your town. I'm not saying commit to terrorist activities. I'm saying just if your your town is most if you're in a small town and you've got mostly good people the best thing for you to do is to get together with your police department and say look we've got some young men here that if shit goes if if everything goes sideways and y'all need backup you call us and we'll have a we'll have a little unit going and we will start calling people one right after the other and when these protesters come in we will find them surround them and escort them out of the town with a couple of verbal obscenities. <laughs> anyway, uh, tell me what you think, folks. Be sure to hit me up in the comments. Um, be sure to also like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And hit the bell for notification. I put videos out whenever I can. I don't have a very good schedule. Most of the time I'm running Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm doing a Thursday video because this was just too funny. Uh, I can't confirm any of this stuff, but it seems like they have taken my advice. And it, this is the most logical action was to shut off all of their utilities. Okay, I, the chop is eventually going to be over. Anyway, folks, um, stay frosty, keep your head in a swivel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.